Merry Christmas, everyone. December 25th, 2016, 2017. Looks like it's going to be an awesome year, so I just wanted to say Merry Christmas to everyone. Today we're doing the rear brakes, rear brake uh, pads on a 2014 Chrysler 200. These are 19 millimeter uh, lug nuts. 19 millimeter. Go ahead, loosen all these up, and then we'll raise up the vehicle. You want to loosen these up before you raise up the vehicle. Your wheel, your wheel will just spin on you. Right down here, bringing in my uh, floor jack. Raise this up off the ground. Usually there's a cover on the on the rim. Actually, I had to pull this tire off a couple days ago, so I just left the, uh, the plastic cover off because I knew I was going to be doing this job here real soon. And this is what it sounds like. So while, while, while this customer was driving, this is what he could hear. So that little, that's what, that's the sound of the little metal sensor touching the rotor. I'm just doing brake pads on this vehicle. The owner did not want to do rotors. Best practice would be go ahead, do rotors and brake pads at the same time. Or you could actually turn these. You could actually take them to O'Reilly Auto Parts and have them turned. When I say turn, that basically means they put them on a machine that, that removes the uh, imperfections. Like on a piece of metal, it'll get it wavy. And they had put it on a machine, it actually uh, a brake lathe, and actually makes it flat again. cuts a cuts a new surface onto the metal. Right here, you have two bolts that you need to remove to uh, get to the get access to the brake pads, which are right back in here. The funny thing is about these, so you can see there's a nine sixteenths, and there's a fourteen millimeter. What you'll see in a second is that they both don't fit one hundred percent. So there's some play right there on that one. There's some a little bit more play on that one, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna use the 14 millimeter. Remember, these are righty tighty lefty loosey. So if you think about it, counter righty tighty, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So we're gonna go that way. So I'm gonna put this on here and press down. Now the key thing to remember is that you need to grease these pins. These are pins. The, Brake caliper right here slides on the pins, and uh, you need to grease those. And sometimes these are. Ah. Sometimes you need a little help getting those loose. So I have a hammer right here. Go ahead, hit it right here. I'm gonna hit the. I'm gonna hit the wrench with this part of the hammer, not the head of the hammer, with this little part right here. Go ahead, get that loose. I'm just gonna do one side. This is actually the driver's side. I'm not going to do the passenger side because it'll be exactly the same. I don't want to bore you with that. Okay, so what I did right here is I removed the lower bolt, the lower pin. Go ahead and moved it up, and now I'm able to slide this whole assembly out. There's your other pin. This is the pin you're going to grease right here. Okay? Right inside here, there's one brake pad. Here's the other one. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna put a link in the description below of a video of somebody that did this job. Actually, just a really did a hack job on this. So here's the sensor I was telling you about right here. This piece of metal. So that piece of metal right there, the brake pad material, gets lower than what this metal is. So that's what you're hearing. That's just a good indicator that your brake pad is about to go out. Or you're very not about to go out, but you're very low on brake material, which is this right here. All right, next thing you want to do, right here, these slides. Hopefully, you guys can see this. There's a slide here. There's one on top as well. Right here, this slide right here, which the brake pad slides on. This metal part actually gets stuck in there and slides back and forth. You're gonna want to clean this up with some uh, brake clean and a steel wool brush or a tooth toothbrush if you have it. Then we're going to apply some Siliglide. I got this from Napa. It's a synthetic, uh, non-melting, non-freezing, non-gumming. Helps, just helps the pad slide back and forth. So you get even wear on both sides. Because if this binds up at all, sometimes you'll see a brake pad that has a lot of brake pad material left. And another one, the other side, doesn't have any at all. And that's mostly caused by uh, 
the slide's not getting greased right. Get some brake cleaner. Go ahead, hit it down there. Hit it up here as well. Try to clean this up as well as possible. This slide on top and bottom. I'm just going in here with a rag and cleaning it up. Like I said earlier, if you can, uh, either replace the brake rotors or have them turned to put a new surface onto them. Most major major uh, auto parts stores can do it. But call in advance just to make sure that they have time or that they're actually capable of doing it because typically you have to leave them. Get some of the Napa Silla Glide here. Do not get this on the brake pad, the surface that actually connects to the rotor. Just a little bit will do ya. A little dab will do ya. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the slide pins as well, here and here. I'm going to show you how to push the uh, piston back into the caliper. But first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and remove this uh, cap on the uh, brake fluid reservoir. Don't worry, I know I've gotten some comments in the past. Guys are saying, oh, dirt and debris are going to fall in this. You don't have this open long enough for really any dirt or water or debris to get into this, so don't even worry about it. The reason you want to do this is because when you push that piston back, that hydraulic fluid, the brake fluid has to go somewhere. So it's going to push itself back into this reservoir. And if you don't have the cap off, see that seal right in there? You can blow that seal out sometimes. So best practice, remove the cap, and then go ahead and push the piston back. When you're done, make sure you put this cap back in place. Otherwise, all the brake fluid inside the reservoir will come and shoot up and get onto your hood. We're going to pull this other brake pad off. <clears throat> and once we do that, it'll give us access to push the piston back into place. So go ahead, grab this. You might need to get uh, some, uh, uh, what do you call it, a screwdriver to get in there and pop that open. Okay, just working this loose. Bend those up a little bit, the back tabs. All right, got that out. Had to tap that out of place. One end of your C-clamp's gonna go here. The other one's gonna go on the back of the brake pad. Go ahead and bring this into place. Spin this down. Then once you hit contact with the bra old brake pad, you're just gonna slowly move the piston back into place. Now just slowly moving the piston back into the caliper. And you wanna do this because if you don't, with the piston all the way out, there's not enough room with all the meat on the new brake pad to get the caliper to sit on the rotor. Like I said earlier, you want to use the brake pad or some kind of buffer between the C-clamp and the piston because you don't want to mar the surface at all. Okay, I'm going to go until it bottoms out. It's bottomed out. Release the C-clamp. Now you're ready to install the new, uh, the new brake pads. So I got the new ones from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Bring this in, it only goes one way. The curved part usually will face down to the curved part of the caliper. Go ahead and get those clips in the place. You might have to open them up with your hands a little bit. At the same time, push down. Just move them back and forth a little bit to get them to seat correctly. There's a little post on the inside that it needs to sit into. Okay, so it actually went into place. I had to stick a screwdriver down in here, right in here, push it out a little bit, and it popped into place. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here on the back side, see these pins? There's a spot on the inside of the caliper that these pins, these two pins have to sit into. So those have to sit correctly for the, for the brake pad to sit right. So you want that totally flush against the brake pad and the caliper. Okay. Now we're bringing the other one. The brake material needs to be facing the rotor. So flip that around. All right. Okay, now we're ready to bring in the caliper. Everything's in place. Make sure these, these slide pins are greased good. Go ahead, put a little bit more there. Bring in your caliper, start on the top. 
Slide that into place. Make sure this lower one, the bushing, the little rubber grommet is there. Put a little bit more grease onto this one. Roll that around a little bit. And slide that back through. Tighten that down. Just going to do finger tight right now. Bring in my 14 millimeter. Leave that a little bit loose. Make sure you get this one started on top. And what a what a crappy design to put the brake, put this hose right here. What a bunch of idiots. They could have put it at a 90 degree right here at a 90 and teed it out. Anything but this. That's stupid. That's probably the reason why I'll never buy a Chrysler. Hate Chrysler. Alright, well I'm going to finish this up. I won't show you the other side. One thing you need to note is you need to put the uh, reservoir cap back onto the reservoir. You want to pump the brake five to ten times before you drive the vehicle after doing this job. So that it gives enough time for the piston to come out make contact with the brakes. If you don't, then you're going to go driving and you're going to put on the brake and it's going to go to the floor and you're going to be get all scared and afraid. So make sure you pump the brake pedal five to ten times after you put the reservoir fluid cap back on, brake fluid reservoir cap back on, to make sure that you have contact on the piston and the new brake pads. Like I said earlier, the owner didn't want to do rotors you didn't want to turn them or get new ones but if you can best practice buy new uh, brake rotors or have your existing ones turned all right I'm just snugging those up by hand those are tight this one's tight that one's tight another thing to note is you do not need to open up the uh, bleeder bleeder valve for the brake fluid there's no reason to do that ever Unless you need to ch chase out the brake or change out the caliper, there's no reason to open up the hydraulic system, the brake fluid system. You're just asking for problems if you do that. You're just asking for air to enter the system, and then you're in a world of hurt. If you found any of my videos helpful, please consider subscribing to Bundy's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter. Also, at the end of the video, there'll be uh, an option to watch more of my. DIY videos on auto repair, product reviews, tool reviews. You guys have a great Christmas. Be safe out there. Don't drink and drive. Don't get too liquored up. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.